We're at Port Stephens, it's the regatta weekend, we're with uh, Paul Westlake and he's on board Marcus Blackwell's new uh, addition to his fleet, uh, it's a new hooligan, so uh, Paul tell us all about it mate. Yeah, yeah, good morning uh, Jeff. Yeah, well this is uh, Marcus's uh, latest uh, purchase, this is a uh, 2015 model uh, TP52, was the Azura, um, I'm sure many of the watchers know exactly who Azura is, they uh, you know, they dominate uh, one of the top, top teams in the Super Series, won the last season and um, are jumping into a new boat at the moment, which uh, just got launched last week. So Marcus took the opportunity to purchase this boat, bring it down to Australia and, um, you know, do some IRC, fun IRC racing with it. So really the, the systems on this boat and the boat that we're standing on here was state of the art in 2015 and then obviously with some few modifications through the course of the season, the three seasons as we all did, now within the Super Series uh, there's nine new boats being launched so it's going through that three year redevelopment again. But this boat is still, the systems and the way this boat's set up is state of the art for the fleet. Mate that's great news isn't it because all that good gear is coming back into this fleet here in Australia so it's, it's building up as far as the, uh, the fleet here is concerned and uh, sailing here is getting very competitive. Yeah absolutely you know IRC is still the benchmark, benchmark in Australia um, as far as the kind of um, high performance uh, rating rule is concerned and bringing a boat like this into Australia um, you know sends a really strong message I think uh, to the industry, to um, you know, owners and competitors alike, that uh, you know, to have a flagship sort of program like this, uh, you know, an Azura coming to Australia, as Marcus did uh, five years ago, I think it was when he uh, purchased Team New Zealand, bought Team New Zealand, right. and then Rob Hanna bought Azura and uh, another Azura, and he right. bought that down and called it Shogun. You know, I mean, it's um, it's a great opportunity to bring these boats out of the Super Series kind of spec, bring them down here and race them IRC. What do you see in the uh, Hobart race, there's something like 952, <laughs> yeah. isn't there really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well the, the boats can do it, you know, I hear, uh, I have, you know, we often hear comments, oh, but it's built to, you know, med conditions. I can assure you, we race these boats in 25 knots and big waves, and structurally, absolutely, they can deal with anything you throw at them, but obviously they need a little bit extra waterproofing. <laughs> Indeed. We're talking about waterproofing by standing on the boat here, so let's go through and, and you can show us around. Yeah, well, why don't we go up to the bow here, Jeff? Indeed. All right, now what are we talking about here? Yeah, well, up at the pointy end here, obviously uh, bow sprit just with, uh, with uh, one tack line. We don't have the ability to peel. If we need to peel for some reason, we just go and uh, clip onto that little uh, the soft, hang the soft loop out the front, but basically uh, no double lines. Coming through to the uh, the headstay here, single foil, gorilla foil. Once again, we mm. have no ability to change jibs. The jib you have up is the jib you have up. <laughs> <laughs> Adjustable uh, headstay down to a uh, hydraulic ram, so we can adjust the uh, the rake for the balance of the boat. We'll yep. talk about that a little bit later. You know, normal tack Cunningham for the jib jib luff tension, and then we just have uh, one jib. One jib halyard. One halyard. Yeah, one halyard on a, uh, a rotating uh, lock, and then uh, spinnaker halyard. We have two spinnaker halyards, but uh, the red one is the only one we use. The green one is just an emergency, and it's up the rig on a um, on a mouse line for windage. Uh -huh. Moving back. Yeah. We have uh, this is the staysail. Furler, uh, furler below deck, controlled yep. by the pitman, oh, so good. no windage, keeping the weight low. Excellent. Four hatch is uh, set up, so the staysail can actually be connected, connected to the, uh, the tack can be connected to the furling point there, um, and it can, the hatch can be closed and it's just enough clearance for the uh, staysail to be snaked onto deck. Uh -huh. So as soon as we come around the top mark, drop the jib, jib halyard onto the uh, staysail, straight up, straight right. in the air. But trying to keep the boat as waterproof as we can, even in this short course racing, sure. because uh, the secret to these boats is keep them as light as you possibly can. So yeah. we're trying to keep every milliliter of water out and every gram of weight out. Excellent. Southern Spars rig, not much to see, you can shine your camera up there, but uh, 
Uh, TPT technology, ultra high modulus, carbon fibre rig with carbon rigging. So the full Southern Spars package, uh, Southern Spars uh, supply the whole fleet. Yeah. Now they're just the, they're the uh, only place to go for rigs for this class. Once again, waterproofing, very important. The thing about this waterproofing is that we actually have uh, movement at the deck, at the deck collar with the mast sure. to be able to control it. So you need enough, uh, you need enough movement there so um, it still seals. Soft boom bang. Uh, the, the TP52 rule, the Super Series rule, actually requires us to have the ability for, um, to support the boom. Mm -hmm. So this is just a carbon, uh, carbon fibre compression tube, which literally we only ever use it when we're hooking the mainsail up. <laughs> it's one of those funky rules. Um, I'm sure some uh, listeners and uh, viewers of this will say, well, why do you have that? Why isn't it just soft? It's part of the TP52 rule. Really? Honestly, Marcus, we could take this off under IRC, uh, but the bang control is down below. It comes up through this soft, uh, sure. soft spike. Uh, Instruments, here we go. Come around here. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Instruments are the latest uh, Garmin displays. You can see there's a uh, mass of numbers, uh, mass of numbers there, but we use them all the time. Starting at the top, we have boat speed, target boat speed, true wind angle, target true wind angle, heel, apparent wind angle, true wind direction, distance to port and distance to starboard ley lines. So the crew, especially the pitman, knows um, where we are and the geometry of the race course. Yeah. And we go uh, wind speed, car sheeting positions in degrees, 4.4, 3.4. Yeah. Compass, what every sailor needs to yeah. know what's going on. Know where you're going, of course, it helps, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, these are two functions that we play around with. This is actually a uh, cap tension and a, uh, a rake kind of uh, a gyro. Gyro rake and control of the, um, the pitch of the boat. So you've got uh, your sensors all over the boat, have you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that makes it easy, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, well. If you can, uh, if you can uh, d deal with so many numbers, yeah, you've got to be careful. <laughs> Otherwise, it's information in and information out. That's right, yeah. Uh, control lines here for the pitman, very simple. This is the, uh, the furler control for the staysail. Uh -huh. So yeah. the pitman controls that here. Yeah. And then we just have the normal, uh, normal deal, the tack line, starboard spinnaker, which I said is always just up the top of the mast. You hope you never use it. Yeah. Port spinnaker, jib. Uh, and jib, you know, jib goes onto a lock, but this jam is rated. If for some reason you can't get the sail on the lock, you can sail at about 70 to 80 percent load just on the halyard until we can get it on the lock. So it goes locked, yeah. yeah, so one tiny little uh, pit winch, that's all you need. So then uh, these are just uh, controls for that's the uh, jib lock yeah. open and close. So that's open it, close it. And then uh, basically these are the little, what the boys call the dick, open and close the dick, which is a little extension on the uh, bow sprit to stop the spinnaker sheet um, falling in the water. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh, Simple as that. Yeah. Um, all the halyards are on automatic take up, um, take up reels. So once the uh, jib's up, when it's loaded, we unload them at the moment. Yeah. But once it's loaded, we can just take the slack out. Excellent. Jib, spinnaker, everything, so no sheets need to be run at any time. So you're always ready for a drop, no risk of any knots. <laughs> staysail sheeting, spinnaker staysail comes through little uh, ratchet here, through onto the deck and up to the clue of the sail. And this gets uh, trimmed on the weather side by the mid bowman. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Coming back to the all important uh, jib trimmer. So the jib trimmer, if you turn around here, you can see where the jib cars are here. Yep. The slots in the deck. Um, we sailed like all day yesterday in uh, between 12 and 12 and 13 knots of wind speed, maximum, maximum in, which is three degrees. So, I mean, these boats sail incredibly tight uh, sheeting that's angles. Right. Well, that's very yeah, tight, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. 
but they can be adjusted uh, tack to tack based on we, we change the settings based on sea state, wind shear and the way we want to sail the boat tack to tack. So very aggressive movement on uh, jib cars in and out all the time. Mm -hmm. Just on that, that can be done from the weather side. So the jib trimmer will typically be hiking and he has the ability here, or the mainsail trimmer, myself, we have the ability to play the, uh, the jib in and out for uh, mode sailing with a shift. Sure, yeah. So I can pull it in the whole way in if we want to go into a high mode, and then when there's load on it, I can bleed it back out. No one has to get off the rail. A development for 2000 and, uh, 2018, the new boats is, we're going to be what's called cross sheeting. So any J24 sailors, any small boat sailors out there yeah. know exactly what cross sheeting's about. It's being having the ability to trim the jib while hiking. Well, yeah. we're getting into that technology now with the uh, 52s. Having real, uh, real uh, dingy stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Having the ability to have all your controls, yeah. jib up and down, tack, and everything can all be done by the windward side. And you can control the jib sheet and actually trim because it's all about having the weight to windward as much as you possibly can. If you can flat, yeah. So saves having the jib trimmer to go the whole way down to leeward to make an adjustment. Yeah. Also enables the mainsail trimmer who sits here, which is my spot. I've got the mainsail here, the jib trimmer's next to me. Yeah. Very close communication yeah, about well. how we want to mode sail the boat with the helmsman and the tactician. So the, what we call the speed loop yeah. is very, very uh, compact. Yeah, you're on the, and the same area. Yeah, and the communication is much, much simpler. Moving down the back, just watch the tiller here. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, here we go. The, yeah. So the controllers on the, uh, basically this is uh, where all the mechanics start and stop. If this uh, backhand or what we call the, uh, the aft grinder station, the guy who runs this, or the two guys, or in particular, there's one guy who controls this, makes or breaks every every spinnaker drop and every uh, spinnaker hoist that we make. Because from this system here, we're controlling the uh, hydraulics for the forestay and for the deflector. He can also, he has the control for the, um, for the string, either string disconnected or string engaged for the spinnaker drop system. Drop, yeah. And then he also, whether he wants to be in override gear for hydro or override gear for pumping the mainsail. And then he's got a wealth of buttons on what he wants to actually engage as well. Uh -huh. So basically it's a little bit of uh, dancing at times. You hear a lot of dancing on buttons. Yeah, the tap dancing, yeah. yeah, but the coordination here is absolutely critical of course, yeah. to make sure that the strings engage to drop the spinnaker, hydros are right for bringing the deflector in at the bottom mark, grinding the mainsail at the bottom mark. It's a very, very busy spot on the boat. And of course the drops are so fast these days, aren't they really? Uh... Yeah, I think the thing with the spinnaker drops, what we managed to uh, develop in the TP-52 fleet, you know, back uh, before in uh, like 2012, 2011, we, we had spinnaker poles, you know, and we were sailing asymmetrical sails, but uh, with a spinnaker pole, and then we went to the full asymmetrical with the bowsprit and got rid of the poles. Mm. And then that enabled us to start developing. And at the same time, uh, you know, cup boats had done a huge amount of work on that in 2000 in particular, and um, in New Zealand, and then into Valencia in 2004. And so that uh, basically uh, the ability to drop the spinnakers now here is just, it's a three, two, one, bang, down she goes. And um, you have to have very, very robust systems as far as your crew works concerned. The coordination has to be right but also the systems in the boat, because there's no escaping. I mean, when it's playing 25 knots and you've got an A4 up and you're coming into the bottom mark doing 20 knots planing and there's five TP-52s all alongside each other, it's three, two, one, and you're basically opening all three jammers, the spinnaker sheet, the tack line and the halyard. And basically the spinnaker goes up in the air and it kind of disappears for like one or two seconds. And then all of a sudden, down she comes, yeah, you know. It's a hand of God. <laughs> in the sewer down below, how many have you got down there? No, people? no one, no how one, many? no, no, no. It's completely, it's, we rely 100% on the string line. The string line fails, you don't go around the bottom mark. There's no escaping. <laughs> We've seen that before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have, but touch wood. <laughs> oh, indeed. Yeah, yeah. 
So that's basically the uh, that's basically the deal. You know, it's um, you know they're fun boats to sail. They're obviously extremely high performance. You can feel just walking on it how stiff the boat is. Yeah. Very very stiff. Very very light. You've got to be gentle with them as far as the way you handle them. You know, I ask you to take your shoes off and stuff. I mean, you know, we treat this thing like a, a you know a fine piece of machinery. You Which know, it is. It is. You yeah. can't you can't abuse as you go higher and higher into the performance range. You've got to treat it no different to the way form we see Formula One cars treated in the garages. You see all the mechanics. You know, yeah. you know everyone's got their job. Well, on this boat here, there's a crew of 15. Everyone has a role. Everybody has a responsibility, and that's part of the part of the learning curve. And then, as you said, a little bit of the, getting a boat like this down into Australia, and what Matt Allen's doing with his new boat, and you know, and then what we see with the hundreds, with Comanche, with Infotech, with uh, yeah, um, with Blackjack, and of course uh, Wild Oats and the Wild Oats family, and the 66s, uh, yeah. 66 here's racing. I mean, all these boats are great showcases. But at the end of the day, they're all sold by Aussies and Aussie owners and, um, you know, the Australian industry is pushing really hard, you know, it's great.